Continuation of Chapter 3, Page 7 3, 2, 2 Woe to the scribes and Pharisees We cannot explain better what the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees means but to read through what Jesus said in Matthew 23. He dedicated an entire chapter just to warn us of what kind of teaching and behavior we should not have in the kingdom of heaven. We just have to read it. Matthew 23 Then Jesus spoke to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. Therefore, whatever they bid or tell you to observe, that observe and do, but do not do according to their works, for they say and do not do. In other words, they talk the talk, but do not walk the walk. For they bind heavy burdens, and grievous or hard to be borne, and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. But all their works they do for to be seen of men. They make broad their phylacteries, and enlarge the borders of their garments, and love the uppermost rooms at feasts, and the chief seats in the synagogues, and greetings in the markets, and to be called of men, Rabbi, Rabbi. In other words, if you do not put the title before their name, they are not happy. Do not even dare to call them brother or sister. They love title and recognition of men. But you, do not be called rabbi, for one is your master or teacher, even Christ, and all you are brethren. There is nothing wrong with titles. Jesus was the one who appointed the fivefold ministry, apostle, prophet, teacher, evangelist and pastor, and all the other offices of bishop, deacon, etc. Let not the office get into your head. You are first a brother and a sister before being in any of those offices. You are placed there to serve not to lord over the people, to have authority over the powers of darkness and rule over the powers of darkness that are tormenting the people, but not to lord or be master over the people. Matthew 20 verse 25 to 28 and call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father who is in heaven. Neither be called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. But he who is greatest among you shall be your servant, and whoever shall exalt himself shall be abased, and he who shall humble himself shall be exalted. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for you neither go in yourselves, neither do you allow those who are entering to go in. They know the right teaching of the scriptures, but refuse to do it, and do not teach the people the truth of the scriptures, so that the people will never discover what the way God expects them to serve him is. They are afraid that if they teach the truth to the people, that same truth will expose their evil deeds. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayer. Therefore you shall receive the greater damnation. They will never teach you how to pray. They like it when people depend on them, so that if you have a problem, you always call them to come and pray for you. When the prayer is answered, they will take all the glory and not God. They will keep you in bondage and in a sense manipulate you financially. Since you do not know how to pray for yourself, you will always be calling them to come and pray for you. They will ask you for money for their services. They want you to tell them everything in your life so that if something good happens to you, they take the credit for the promotion God gave you, etc. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you compass sea and land to make one proselyte, and when he is made, you make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. Woe unto you, blind guides, who say, Whoever shall swear by the temple, it is nothing, but whoever shall swear by the gold of the temple, he is a debtor. You fools and blind, for which is greater, the gold or the temple that sanctifies the gold? And whoever shall swear by the altar, it is nothing, but whoever swears by the gift that is upon it, he is guilty. 
You fools and blind, for which is greater, the gift or the altar that sanctifies the gift? Therefore he who shall swear by the altar swears by it, and by all things thereon. And he who shall swear by the temple swears by it, and by him that dwells therein. And he who swears by heaven swears by the throne of God, and by him that sits thereon. The scribes, Pharisees, and Sadducees yoked people, pledges, and oaths. Do not be deceived, it is the same thing. You swear that you will do something. But they come up with tricks how not to pay their vows, oaths, or pledges. They will say, I only swore by the altar or by the temple, therefore I am not obligated to redeem it. Since they were the leaders, the people could not question their words. There is nothing wrong with oaths, vows, or pledges. It is biblical. But the hypocrite leaders of the Jews wanted to be seen by men when they do their liberalities. Therefore they will declare publicly what they have pledged to give to the treasury of the house of God. So people will be praising them for that pledge, but when the time comes to redeem the pledge, they will give these excuses, that they did not swear by the gift on the altar or by the gold of the temple, so they were not going to redeem it. Meanwhile, they have also yoked the people by asking them to vow a pledge or make an oath publicly, but when the people will not be able to redeem it, they will not apply the same rules for the people that they themselves have used in order not to redeem their pledge. They were being hypocrites and using a double standard. But what is the right teaching about the vow or pledge or taking an oath? In the Bible, we can see it is a personal thing between the individual and God. No one else knows that a vow or a pledge has been made by that individual. Only God, since it is only that person and God who knows what was vowed or pledged. Therefore, only God can come, can ask that person to redeem his or her vow or pledge. We see that with Hannah, she vowed in her heart that if the Lord gives her a child, she will give it back to God. Eli, the high priest, did not even know what she was saying in her prayer. Her lips were moving, but no sound came out of her mouth. And when God gave her Samuel, she brought him back to the house of God, and had to explain to Eli that she vowed to bring the child to God. Eli did not know anything about the vow, from the time she made it to the time she redeemed it. Eli was clueless. 1 Samuel 1 We also have the example of Jephthah. He made a vow to the Lord that if God delivers his enemies into his hand, he will give him whatever comes out of his house when he returns from the battle. Unfortunately for him, it was his only daughter that came to welcome him when he came back victorious from his enemies. He had to redeem his vow and gave his daughter to God. She was a virgin her entire life. Judges 11 No one knew of the vow of Jephthah, neither the soldiers who went into battle with him, nor his daughter, nor the priests. It was between God and Jephthah. Our father Jacob had an encounter with the Lord, and God made him a promise to give him the blessing of Abraham and Isaac. In return, Jacob made a vow that if God did his part of the bargain, he will give God his tithe. Genesis 28 Jacob was fleeing for his life, for Esau wanted to kill him. He was alone when he cried out to God for help, and when he made that vow. God kept his part of the bargain, and when Jacob had come back to Bethel, we had made that vow, he gave God his tithe. Jesus will give us the true teaching about vows or pledges or oaths to help us, so that no one will coerce us into making a pledge that we cannot redeem. To free us from the hypocrites who are also asking us to vow or pledge publicly, so that they will be harassing us to redeem that pledge or vow. Do not get Jesus wrong. He is not telling us not to pledge at all or to vow or take an oath at all. He is the God of Jacob and Jacob vowed. But Jesus is helping to remove the burden and the yoke of pledges and vowed that we have been or will be coerced to take publicly by the hypocrites. Your vows or pledges must be between you and God. 
Therefore Jesus says, You have heard that it was said by those of old time, You shall not swear or pledge or make a vow falsely, but shall perform or redeem your oaths or pledges or vows to the Lord. But I say to you, do not swear at all, do not vow at all, do not pledge at all publicly when you are coerced, neither by heaven, for it is the throne of God, nor by earth, for it is his footstool, nor by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Nor shall you swear by your head, because you cannot make one hair white or black, but let your yes be yes, and your no be no. For whatever is more than these is from the evil one. Matthew 5 verse 33 to 37 So when we said in the church setting we will give something, it is enough. Our word is enough. We have already said yes, we will do it. We do not need to pledge or vow. And when we have said we cannot give that money or no is enough, people should not coerce us to go and borrow money. Those methods are from the evil one, not from God, according to Jesus. James will also tell us, Above all, my brethren, do not swear, either by heaven or by earth or by any other oath, but let your yes be yes and your no, no, lest you fall into hypocrisy, hence receive the same judgment of the hypocrite. James 5 verse 12 you do not have to act before men like the hypocrites. You do not have to say yes to please men. The Pharisees liked the recognition and the praises of men rather than the praises of God. That is why they will always raise their hand to pledge in churches, but they will never redeem their pledges. Do not share in their hypocrisy. God sees first our willing heart. We are willing to give to God, and He accepts our liberalities according to what we have, and not according to what we do not have. 2 Corinthians 8 verse 12 You do not have to borrow to try to please men, for a borrower is a slave or bondservant to the lender. Proverbs 22 verse 7 God does not want us to be in financial bondage to anyone or any credit card institution. He tells us, Owe no one anything except the love of God. Romans 13 verse 8 For the Lord warns us, Alas, or woe to him who increases what is not his. How long? And to him who loads himself with many pledges. His creditors will rise up suddenly, those who oppress him will awaken, and he will become their booty. Habakkuk 2 verse 6 to 7 do not be one of those who shake hands in a pledge. If you have nothing to pay, why should the creditor take away your bed from under you? Proverbs 22 verse 26 to 27. Matthew 23 verse 23. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin, and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment or justice, mercy and faith. These you ought to have done, and not to leave the other undone. Jesus was not telling them not to pay their tithe. In fact, Jesus told them, These you ought to have done. To ought to is to be held or bound in duty or moral obligation. We have seen that God spoke the blessing of Abraham and Isaac to Jacob, and Jacob paid his tithe. Abraham, their father, also paid his tithes to Melchizedek, the pre-incarnate of Jesus. Hebrews 7 verse 2 since they were enjoying the blessing of Abraham their father, because while they were still in the loins of Abraham, they gave their tithes to Melchizedek through Abraham. Hebrews 7 verse 10 And it was long before the law was given to Moses, almost 500 years before the law was given to Moses. It was their moral duty and moral obligation to give all these tithes. The problem Jesus had with the scribes and the Pharisees is that they were not doing the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy and faith. Since they had been reading the law, they should put their faith in Christ. For Moses, who gave that law, talked about another prophet, Jesus, who will come after him, and him they must hear. Deuteronomy 18, verse 15 to 18. But they could not believe in Jesus. 
Righteousness and justice, judgment, are the foundation of the throne of God. Mercy and truth go before his face. Psalm 89 verse 14 The scribes and the Pharisees were partial in their justice or judgment and merciless. For instance, in the case of the woman caught in the very act of adultery, John 8, they only brought the woman, not the man, yet the law said to stone both the man and the woman. But we also see in the case of David and Bathsheba, David had committed adultery and murder, but he repented when Nathan the prophet exposed his sins, and God had mercy on David, 2 Samuel 11 and Psalm 51. Matthew 23 verse 24 You blind guides who strain at a gnat and swallow a camel. Both the gnat and the camel were unclean things, and the Jews were not allowed to eat them. Leviticus 11, 41-42, and Leviticus 11, verse 4. The Jews had a custom, if they ate a gnat or a flea or a fly falls into the cup of one of them, they will strain it and drink it. But if a Gentile or a person they considered unclean, even if he is a king of a Gentile nation, they will throw the drink to the ground and not drink it. So the Jew had a proverb among them, to strain the gnat and swallow the camel. In other words, they had much solicitude or concern about little things and none about greater things. They will be overly concerned about what you eat and what you wear. For them, holiness was an outward thing only. They only associate with people that are clean in their sight. That is why they were not happy when Jesus went into the house of tax collectors like Matthew to dine with him and with all the sinners and tax collectors that came into Matthew's house. The scribes and Pharisees complained, How is it that Jesus eats and drinks with tax collectors and sinners? If it were only for the Pharisee and the scribe, none of us would be saved. They wanted us to clean ourselves before being saved. They stumble over the little things. But Jesus told them, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick do. I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Mark 2, verse 14 to 17. They are self-righteous. That is why they do not want to associate with anybody. But Jesus was not self-righteous. He associated with sinners and tax collectors. He talked to the Samaritan woman and allowed unclean people to touch him. Lepers, women with an issue of blood, etc. God does not want us to be self-righteous and to think that we are better than others. We also were saved by grace through faith. We must bring the message of salvation to the sick, unclean and dying world. Let us not stumble over the little things, but let us see the bigger picture, the salvation of their souls. Peter also was playing the hypocrite at a time in Antioch. He was afraid of what some of the believing Jews would say if they saw him eating and drinking with the Gentiles. So when they were not around, he ate and drank with the Gentiles. But when those believing Jews came around, he separated himself from the Gentiles and joined the Jews in their hypocrisy. Paul rebuked him publicly, for this is not the way of Jesus, Galatians 2, verse 11 to 21. This tells us something more. We must be the same person all the time. We must not pretend to love the brethren when in our heart we think they are not as clean or as righteous as we are. There is no such a thing as a second-class citizen of the kingdom of God. It is the same Spirit of God that is in the Jews and in the Gentiles, in the apostles and in the rest of the saints, in the free and in the slaves, in the black, in the white, in the yellow, in the red and in the brown. Matthew 23 verse 25 to 39 Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you may clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. You blind Pharisee! Cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. 
Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like unto whitewashed sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones, and of all uncleanness. Even so you also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within you are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchres of the righteous, and say, If we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Therefore you are witnesses unto yourselves that you are the children of those who killed the prophets. Fill up then the measure of your father's guilt. Serpents, generation of vipers, how can you escape the damnation of hell? Therefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them you shall kill and crucify, and some of them you shall scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city, that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth, from the blood of the righteous Abel unto the blood of Zacharias son of Barachias, whom you murdered between the temple and the altar. Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent unto you, how often would I have gathered your children together, even as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, and you would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. For I say unto you, you shall not see me henceforth, till you shall say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Yes, Jesus said it all. There is nothing to add about the Pharisees, Sadducees, and scribes. Let us not become like them, and let us never introduce their teaching and doctrine into the body of Christ. We must do what they tell us to do as long as it lines up with the teaching and the life of Jesus. The question one might ask is, what is the leaven or teaching allowed in the kingdom of heaven? For Jesus said to us, the kingdom of heaven is like leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal, till the whole was leavened. Matthew 13, verse 33. To be continued.